So you want to be a hacker. Whenever I mention the word hacker or hacking, people with no knowledge in the domain of IT will picture something like this image. A wizard tech that can break into systems while random greenish characters fall on their black terminal. While Google states that the definition of hacking is simply the gaining of unauthorized access to data in a system or computer, I would say that it's not always the case. From my point of view, the definition of hacking is getting something, and typically a computer system, but not limited to this, to perform an action it was not supposed to. Let me give you an example. Picture this. You are at an ITM. The ATM is supposed to receive and dispense money, right? However, that has to happen under a set of conditions. The first thing you do is put in the card. Then you need to provide a sort of identification or password to prove that you are in fact the owner of that card, which in this case is your pay number. Then the amount of money that you want the ATM to dispense. And, need, and this needs to be aligned with the amount of money you have on your card. However, what will happen if I were to ask the ATM machine to dispense, let's say, 250 while my credit card's balance is 200. That is the mindset of a hacker. And if you can manage to get that ATM to dispense more money than you actually have, you have a successfully hacked that system. That is how a hacker thinks. You are dealt with a piece of software, hardware. Really, it can be anything. And you must get that system to do something it was not meant to do. Obviously, the desired goal is to pop a shell, but that is not always the case here, and that is not always the definition of hacking. Hacking is not only about popping shells and gaining unauthorized access to computer systems, it is about tinkering, testing, and finding logic flaws inside software and hardware, and even people. Now, the reason why I'm rambling about this is because I want you to know what you're getting yourself into before committing to it. Let me tell you the truth. Hacking is very hard, but I'm not discouraging you. It requires a lot of hard work and dedication and discipline. And unfortunately, it's not always like the, the scenes you see on movies. For a, more portray for, ma for a more accurate portrayal of hacking, I suggest you check out the TV show Mr. Robot. I think it's the, the closest thing to hacking I have seen on a movie. Now, this brings us to our question, how do we become a hacker? In order to hack something, you must understand it very well. This is why before you start studying and practicing the art of offensive security, you have to understand basic technologies to begin with. And the first thing is basic computer knowledge. This one should be pretty obvious. You got to be good with computers. When I first started getting into hacking, I didn't even understand about computers. Uh, 10 years, uh, let's say 10 years ago, I knew nothing about computers. I, I started from the bottom. And the best way to start when you're starting from the bottom is to do a certification like CompTIA A+. This will build your skills in computer hardware and software. You don't need the certificate. You just need the knowledge. Personally, I have gone through the A+, certification. Uh, I have not yet acquired the certification, but I have the skills and knowledge that I need to excel in my work. And also, there are a lot of go-to free resources on the internet for your uh, basic computer knowledge. YouTube is there. You have different websites. You have Cisco Skills for All. Now, that one is, the I think, by far the best one. It's free and it's offered by Cisco, one of the biggest players in, in the industry. Now, the next thing you need to understand is networking knowledge. And this one I must emphasize even a lot. Networking, networking, networking. You need to understand how computer systems communicate with each other. You need to know how different protocols and how they work. SSH, we have DNS, we have HTTP, HTTPS. You need to understand all these different protocols because this is what a computer is used to communicate. So networking knowledge, my friend, this one is the, is the, is the most important of them all. And you can get a certification uh, knowledge from this, uh, uh, from uh, CompTIA. We are, they have Network Plus certification. We also have Cisco, CCNA. 
And YouTube is also there. There are a lot of videos there. Check out Network Chuck, uh, Loy Liang, Hacker Sprite. They all have, uh, I think, videos that are cover some basic networking knowledge. You don't need to be a pro in this. You just need to acquire the basic knowledge to understand how these things work. The next thing is Linux skills. Operating systems that are based on the Linux kernels is what hackers use on a day-to-day -day basis. Probably 99% of the tools and software that we use in penetration testing engagements are meant to run on Linux. Nmap, Wireshark, Metasploit, all these are meant to run on Linux and Linux alone. Also, most web servers also run Linux, and there are multiple reasons for this. However, for now, it's just important to know that Linux powers a lot on the internet. And if you are running, li you are running Linux, by the way, and you don't even know it, if you own an Android phone, you are basically running Linux. It's very crucial to be fluent in Linux and to be able to navigate this wonderful operating system. In my opinion, the best way to learn it is, of course, to just wipe Windows off your computer and load a bootable USB flash drive with, uh, let's say, Ubuntu Linux. You should start off with, uh, I think, Ubuntu because it's, it aims to bring beginners into the world of Linux. Some people I have seen complaining about Linux, oh, it's hard, uh, too many commands, but this that is, I think, what they're talking about is maybe Kali Linux or uh, Parrot Linux, Blatchard Linux. Those are meant for penetration testers and ethical hackers. If you're starting to begin, or if you're beginning uh, your Linux uh, journey, I suggest you start with Ubuntu. It's easier, it has a nice interface, and you'll feel at home, just like w Windows. The next thing is security basics. Now, before you delve into the world of hacking, you must first understand the basic concepts and technologies implied with cybersecurity. We have great resources for this. There's Professor Mesa. There's also another CompTIA certification known as Security Plus. Uh, you can go to IT Pro TV, Cisco Skills for All. The I think they have a lot of great resources there that can kickstart your security uh, journey. It, uh, the aim of this uh, security is to teach you the basics of cybersecurity, of course, and which is exactly what you need at the moment. The next thing is coding. And you'll see that I've put coding with question marks. Uh, while I personally don't know how to code, uh, I've never developed any software in the past, I currently work on uh, uh, other people's tools. I'm not ashamed to say that, but I'm, as I'm talking right now, I'm still learning a uh, Python, and I'm I'm learning it through Cisco Skills for All program. They have a course there, Python Skills, basic Python Skills, very 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 good resource. I would say that code is not necessary to be a good hacker. Is it a good skill to have? Sure. Is it necessary? Uh, not really. But what you need to learn, however, is basic scripting. This can be basic Bash or PowerShell scripting or even Python. You just need to know a little bit of scripting. However, the most important part in this field is not to write code, but to be able to read and understand it. So you need to understand code. There's a big difference between being able to code software and to analyze and read code from another programmer. This is important due to the common security practice known as code analysis. For this, you can just look up coding tutorials on YouTube, and I promise you, you'll find whatever you're seeking. This takes us to the next thing, hacking. Now, finally, the good stuff, yeah? A lot of hard work needs to, uh, to, be, to have been put in place for you to get here. And yes, it is worth it. Now, how can you learn hacking by yourself? And for absolutely free. Mm, just Google it. But seriously though, here is objectively the best resource that will hands down teaching you everything we had talked about plus the hacking knowledge. This video on ethical hacking in 15 hours, we have part one and part two by TCM. Very, very nice videos. I've gone through them. Um, the first part will teach you the foundations we had talked about earlier. And the second part will teach you the basics of hacking. We have OSINT, Active Recon, 
we have vulnerability scanning, exploitation, and even buffer overflow, exploit development. Hands down, it is the greatest free resource out there. Later. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next video.